We're making some progress on the distribution box for the Kearney Trekker Mill. I've been working on it this evening. I thought I would share my progress with you, show you what I've done, explain, explain what I've done, show you a couple things. So I've got this part. I believe this is ready to go back to the, uh, the, the milling machine down here. But I had to get it clean. We had to do a little bit of cleaning on the, the uh, gasket face. And I've only got this done. I've still got to go down here to the knee itself and do the same thing down here. That'll be the next step. So I'm just giving you an update on what I'm doing. Okay, so uh, just use my little air grinder with these uh, Scotch Brite roll lock pads. And that's what I'm using to clean the gasket, the gasket face there. And I, I got a couple pictures that I took along the way to kind of show you what I'm doing because I did wrap this all up and help keep some of the dust out of there. This is what we will be using whenever we go back together with it, okay? It's a Loctite 515 gasket eliminator. This is some really good stuff. This is what it's designed for. It only takes a very small bead around one of your faces and it'll, it'll be great. This will work fine. So once we actually get the thing stuck together and I know that it's going in there, then I'll go ahead and get this out and I'll run a bead on whichever piece I need to. I don't know which one yet. So I uh, just wanted to show you that's what we're going to use. Okay. So let me uh, give you a peek here a little bit closer and show you what we got done. As I said, it's, it's nice and clean and dry. Everything's hooked back up just like it's supposed to be. So this face here is what I wanted to get cleaned up. So we wrapped it up with our plastic and then I used our scotch bright wheel to go in there and dress that very lightly just to clean it get it down to bare metal and on the bottom side what I did was I flipped it back up and then I was able to get to the bottom okay so after all this was clean you know I've, I've cleaned out our, our oil lines those are all cleaned out really well so after everything was clean, that's when I wanted to start washing it down. And so what I use is my, I got some fast, fast evaporating cleaner. It's kind of like brake fluid or uh, brake cleaner. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. It, it, it evaporates really fast and, and it's, it re works really well. So I've kind of washed the whole thing lightly and everywhere that I could reach, I've uh, put my rag in that cleaner and I just kind of rubbed it and cleaned it. And there was like a residue, you know, a dirty residue on everything, especially down here in the bottom. There's some little pockets down here in the, in the casting on both sides. I cleaned those out real good. And I used my little Zep sprayer and just kind of sprayed up in there and washed everything down. There's some little channels right up here, you know, that are casted in that don't really serve any, any purpose, I don't think. But, you know, they were full of... Uh, a real oily dirty residue so that's kind of why some of these things have that little white residue left on them is just from that um, just from that cleaner of mine okay so as I said it's ready to go back together I think I hope it is anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and move down here and get started on this face right here we're going to get that cleaned up uh, we'll clean up that side right there and also this side over here okay all right we're over here on the knee uh, just getting ready to start doing the cleaning over here and i remembered that i wanted to uh, show you the three oil ports right here and I've, I've left those alone up to this point because i wanted to put this on video i wanted to see what all was inside this hole right here and then we've got another we got another oil line right there that I want to discuss for just a minute also. So um, this is for your wires that go through and go back there, th that cover down there. Anyway, we're focused on these three. These are for your oil. Okay. So there's this is the first one right here, and you see all this blue RTV. You can see where it was just shoved up on the inside of the o-ring like this. You can see where the o-ring was sitting right there. All right. 
it. So the O-rings have already been pulled off. So look at all that. Okay, so here, look at the top one. Try to get some light down there. You can see, you can clearly see where the O-ring was at, and look at all the blue RTV inside of it. Look at that. The whole wad was inside there. I sure hope that taking care of that right there is going to help me in some way. I mean, there's still there's still a passageway through there for oil to go. So I'm not I'm not sitting here trying to say that this was the problem, but it's definitely an issue that should have been addressed right there. Okay. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and start cleaning it up. There was one more thing that I wanted to point out over here on the side. Uh, Brian, I'm kind of talking to you right here because I know you've been helping me earlier on figuring this stuff out, but the little valve body right here that bolts onto the side right here. Brian was wondering what this passageway was for. This one's kind of open right there, but you can see where it sits right here. There's a hole right there. So the oil comes out here. Uh, it's going to transfer from here to here. And then on the inside, there's a line right here. And it goes all the way to the back of the knee and goes into the back there. I'm not sure what that's for. I know it has to do with lubrication, but I'm not sure what it's for. See, there's a hydraulic line right there hooked in to the column coming out the knee. So I'm wondering if that line that goes all the way back there is connected to that that hydraulic hose right there. So I just don't know. But we will find out though. Hopefully I did buy me a, a manual. I bought a manual off eBay and it'll be here. It might be here tomorrow, but hopefully it'll be here pretty soon. And I'll have a manual that I can go through and study and hopefully get a better understanding of all this. So we'll pull that out. So we're going to clean all this out real good, wipe it out. going to use my cleaner and you can kind of see some of the other uh, oiling lines going around the, um, the automatic oiler bolts here and we'll hook into these lines right here. And you see they go around. Okay, just to recap on what I've just done. Went ahead and got the, the gasket faces the gasket faces on all of them clean and then I went ahead and clean out the inside of it really good got it all wiped out I use my my uh, stuff right here my fast evaporating stuff and use that to kind of wash everything down real good got it all washed out and I think it's ready to roll We've got the gasket faces clean good, blew all the oil holes out. That's just stain from the oil draining over the years there. And then on this side, this is just a little cover plate that goes there. We got that cleaned up also. This is actually where you add oil to it. There's a little filler cap that goes there. So she's ready to go. Okay. One of the one of the interesting things that I might add is where where these little oil holes line up. This one right here, the smaller one, actually goes to the inside. Right there, there's a little hole. So that's uh, back to the tank. Whenever that whenever that spool valve is actuated actuated right there, there's a back to the tank port there. Okay, 
Well, next step is to uh, strap that thing back up to the crane. And we're gonna fly it down here and I'm gonna see if I can get it installed. All right, now comes the fun part, getting ready to line it back up. And I am by myself, I don't have Gil with me. Gil's over there partying in Las Vegas right now. So I'm out here by myself, trying to get her back together. But I think we're gonna do it. I was able to get it out of there, so we'll put it, put it back in there. All right, uh, just kind of showing you along the way, I, I got her balanced and picked up nice and level so that whenever I go back in there, you know, it's not turned one way or the other. Hopefully it'll be close enough where everything will line up like they should. I went ahead and here's the dowel pins that line up the knee. Very close fit on these. Okay, so we got one down here also. And it's pretty neat. I was wondering why they milled this flat on there and they got the part number on there also. I believe the flat is so that it, the air has a place to release once it goes up inside the hole. So we'll put those in there. And uh, the one issue that I'm expecting to have is on the other side, we have the two uh, trip levers that connect to this arm and this arm. And that's for your power feeds. That's your, that's your um, uh, I can't remember what they're called now offhand, but they line up in these notches on these rods and your travel, your travel stops, your travel limits, should I say. And they, uh, they pull or push those rods and disengage that thing whenever it travels too far. So we have to get those lined up on the other side of the knee there. And I think I can do it. So I just got to get it in there first and see if it's going to happen. on it just slightly I think we got just enough room now to get this thing in there okay there's the first Not yet. Trying to catch that nut in there. There's a hole in that 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 uh, feed stop rod. There's a hole that thing's got to line up and go through too. Remember whenever I was showing you the the uh, oil suction tube that I made. And I said I might have to kick it around. Well, that's what was happening whenever I was trying to push it in there. I, I, 
forgot about that and I didn't realize it, that it was up against the filter and it was catching the tube right there. We didn't do any damage, but it just, you know, I couldn't push it in anymore by hand. So what I've done is turned it out like I talked about on video. Okay. And hopefully that will give me enough clearance that I can get it in there because it was, it was around here like that and it was running into the casting here. So we're gonna leave it out and we're gonna give it another try. I think I'm gonna have an interference problem with that tube. It's, it's already running into it there. Oh man. <laughs> I mean there ain't no there ain't no room for error. I had to turn it back the other way some to get it to clear. <laughs> you see it right here? Look how close it is to the cast. Whenever it was turned out, straight out, it was hitting here. So I turned it and it just, just cleared. Okay. There we are. All right, we're finally caught on the screw there. Okay. See it going in. I'm feeling for that feed stop where it's got to engage that notch there. We're not quite there yet. All right, I went ahead and pulled the dowel pins out of the, the knee itself and put them in here so that it would line it up accordingly. Uh, I just tried lining it up with them in here and I forgot that this, the hole at the top here goes all the way through. So if it didn't line up right, it could just shove that dowel pin all the way back through there. So that's why I went ahead and pulled them out. Once we get those dowel pins started, I'll move the strap out of the way. <clears throat> Man, close fit. It's on there. I'm going to go ahead and take the strap down and get it off out of the way. Okay, up next is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and get the O-rings stuck to this side, I'm going to use a little bit of that gasket eliminator, just, just enough to keep them tacky, to stick to the uh, little o-ring ports. And after that's going to be running a bead of gasket eliminator around one of these faces and just pulling her up in there. <clears throat> 